28. Describe the molecular geometry and hybridization of the nitrogen, phosphorus, or sulfur atoms in each of the following compounds. And in this one, we have H3PO4, which is phosphoric acid, which is used in cola soft drinks. Woohoo! All right, so we just have to predict what's going on with the molecular geometry and hybridization of specifically phosphorus in this case, because I don't see any nitrogens or sulfurs in H3PO4. Now, if we want to find out the geometry and if we want to find out the hybridization, the easiest way to go about this is to draw the Lewis structure first. Now, there's a whole playlist on this channel just designated to drawing Lewis structures where the steps are all written out on the page and we go through each step one by one. This will kind of be a little bit of a review, so we'll go at it at a quicker pace, but if you need to get the full rundown, you can always check back on the channel. So now, let's first draw that Lewis structure, and then we'll do the molecular geometry and the hybridization. Now, the thing here is to just know, well, what element goes in the middle, right? There's gotta be a central atom, and remember, hydrogen is never in the center, so it's between the phosphorus and the oxygen, and the least electronegative element always goes in the middle. That's the phosphorus if we're looking on a periodic table. So I have a phosphorus, right, P. But now, am I going to attach hydrogens to the phosphorus, or am I going to attach oxygens to the phosphorus? Well, the idea here is that this is an acid, right? And remember, acids always have H plus ions like we see it here, right? It's H3PO4. I have acidic hydrogens that, you know, if we had an acid-base reaction, those H's will be lost. And the H pluses are always bound to the most, whoop, bound to the most electronegative elements because it's the most electronegative elements that will hold the electrons for themselves, making it much easier for the hydrogen to get lost. So if phosphorus was the less electronegative out of the bunch, right, the hydrogens aren't going to be bound to the phosphorus, they're going to be bound to the oxygen, which means that the oxygens come first. There's four oxygens around the phosphorus, so maybe one, two, three, and maybe I will bring this a little bit down and put the fourth oxygen up top here. And now I have three hydrogens off of the oxygen. So one, two, and three. Now we're going to put the valence electrons, right? So all hydrogens have a valence electron of one, so one a piece. Each oxygen on the periodic table has six valence electrons because it's in group 16 or 6A. So I'm just going to draw six dots around each oxygen. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then one, two, three, four, five, six. And then phosphorus, which is right below uh, nitrogen, has five valence electrons. So one, two, three, four, five. We're going dot to dot because that's how you make a single bond. So dot to dot for everybody. So I'm just gonna make a single bond for every connection that I can, doing dot to dot. And then we're going to check those outer elements just to see if they have the octet rule. Now remember, hydrogen only wants to have two electrons. So all the hydrogens are good here. Now let's just check the oxygens. Well, this oxygen has two, four, six, eight electrons, so that's the octet. This oxygen has two, four, six, eight electrons, so that's all good. This oxygen has two, four, six, eight electrons, so that's all good. But this oxygen has two, four, six, seven electrons. Uh-oh, needs the octet, so we're gonna have a multiple bond. Dot to dot, double bonded up. Now this oxygen is good, two, four, six, eight, which means that if all the outer elements are good, the inner one is going to be good as well. But phosphorus has two, four, six, eight, ten electrons. In this case, it has the expanded octet, but that's totally fine because phosphorus can have more than eight electrons if it's the center atom. So now, since we have our beautiful Lewis structure of phosphoric acid, we can now 
uh, predict the molecular geometry. Now they're saying molecular geometry and hybridization of the phosphorus. So we're only looking at the phosphorus here. So let's do the molecular geometry first, right? The molecular geometry is basically tallying up how many elements are bound to this phosphorus, right? This is where we're going to start working with this chart. Now, probably your teacher or professor might want you to memorize this chart, but I put it up on the screen here just to kind of show you how to work with it. But definitely flashcard it out, do whatever you got to do to memorize each molecular geometry. Now, going back to phosphorus, it seems like I have a center atom, which is A. The A is always the center one, as you can see, the A is always in the middle, and the middle one is the phosphorus. And now you're going to see how many elements it's bound to. Well, the phosphorus is bound to one oxygen, another oxygen, another oxygen, and another oxygen. So that's a total of four oxygens. So I have AX4 so far. I don't count these hydrogens because they are not directly bound to the phosphorus. Now you just check for your lone pairs and only around the phosphorus. Well, there's no lone pairs around the phosphorus. So this is all that I'm looking for. I'm looking for something that has an A and four X's around it. So let's see, hmm, I'm scanning. Oh, here it is. Here's my center atom with four substituents around it, right? And the molecular geometry there is tetrahedral. So this would be tetrahedral. Okay, now let's just do the hybridization. If I can, maybe I will just get rid of the drawings here, just so that we don't get confused. Because when we're doing hybridization, which are your S's and P's and D's, all you have to do is just make sure that you link up how many letters you have, right? So for example, SP2 hybridization has one S and two P's. That's a total of three letters. If I add one more P to the mix, that's SP3, and that's a total of four letters. And just know that those letters correspond to things. So two letters, two things. Three letters, three things. And just know that one thing is one of your bonds, so either one single bond, or one whole double bond, or one whole triple bond is classified as one thing. And then a lone pair of electrons is also one thing. So what's going around this phosphorus? Well, it's got single bond, that's one thing. It's got another single bond, that's two things. It's got another single bond, that's three things. And it's got one whole double bond, that's four things. So we say to ourselves, four things, four letters, SP3. You could have also gotten the hybridization Anytime that you do have a tetrahedral molecule, it is always going to be sp3. So you can kind of like bypass this, but always good to just check it out just in case. And that is the final answer for this one. So the phosphorus here is tetrahedral and has sp3 hybridization, and we are done. Okay, what you think? Let me know in the comments. I hope this helped you out. Subscribe to the channel if you want to help us out. We're almost at 30,000 subscribers, and it's all because of you guys. Let's keep learning, and let's keep studying hard. Good luck on your tests and quizzes, and I'll talk to you in later lessons. All right, bye-bye.